Nick? Yeah, that seems about right. Oh, hey, Patrick from Real Film Chatter, realfilmchatter.net, and Facebook and Twitter. And PJ underscore Campbell on Twitter and at Facebook, too. You know, you can find me there. You look really sad again today. Yeah, it's the Star Wars prequels. And Why were, were you watching those again? Yep. I keep telling you not to do that. You end up like this every time. It's almost catatonic. Yeah, but, I mean, I you know, I could deal with not liking the Star Wars prequels, but it's more than just that this time. It's... I'm looking for the original theatrical cuts of Star Wars, and I can't find them. I've looked everywhere. I mean, if that's the case, why not just go digital or Blu-ray? At least it's easy to access. Personally, I, I, I don't agree with the changes you made. I think some of them are worked for the better. I think some changes in Empire, minus Luke screaming and some weird stuff here and there. The open windows in Cloud City adds more atmosphere to it. and it definitely feels real. Yeah, it makes it feel more open. I mean, for all the things that he did in the original trilogy, it's not nearly as bad as some of the stuff that happens in the prequels, especially Attack of the Clones. It is at least Revenge of the Sith makes up for it. I mean, that last prequel, whether you really like it or not, is at least something that adds to the overall story of the series. And there's moments of greatness throughout, even if the movie isn't great. I mean, come on, the space battles, the lightsaber battles, Ewan McGregor, he's amazing in it. I would say he rivals Alec Guinness almost throughout. It's incredible the things that Lucas was able to do, given, you know, he's Lucas, but it helped that Spielberg came along and did help him with the movie. Most people may not realize that, but there's a real air of darkness and sadness throughout the movie, too, and I think it's maybe the most emotional of the entire series for that reason. The fall of the Republic, the fall of the Jedi, the death of Anakin, the rise of Vader and Palpatine, it's very emotional, especially if you're a fan of the series. I guess you got a point. Ian McGregor's pretty great. The space battle, it's the most alive of yes. the prequels. It feels like... It feels like the old trilogy in a lot of ways. It's the closest to the original trilogy out of the prequels for sure. And it's it's not stagnant. The other ones no. feel very stale. I mean, this one has like a lot of stagnant shots too, but this one feels like a movie that actually moves and has a pulse. It feels like a real space opera. Yeah, I've, there's an even an opera scene in it. Yeah, there that's is. How, that's how space opera it is. It really ties everything together and it makes the entire series as haphazard as it seems in those first three movies, it actually works. It makes them fun to watch and gives them a reason to be. So there is merit. It's just about looking for it. Thanks, Patrick. I, I really needed that. After Attack of the Clones, that was... That was no, rough. I, I hear you, man. I, you know how I feel about that movie, but that's why we're here. That's why we talk about these. And really, Revenge of the Sith does get a lot of harsh criticism that it doesn't necessarily need. So I'm glad we had this talk and... We're just a few days away now, man. Think about it. We're, yeah. going, we're going back to a galaxy far, far away, and if you don't like the prequels, at least you can forget about them. We're moving forward in time now. <sighs> Thanks, Patrick. No problem, man. I'll see you later. May the Force be with you. May the Force be with you.